And right now, we're going to talk about one of those, uh, a long-awaited game <laughs> uh, we want to show you. Uh, this is Below, coming from the guys at Capybara Games. And here to tell us about the highly anticipated Below is the co-founder and president, Nathan Bella. Nathan, uh, Below is back. Yeah, we kind of went super dark for a while while you we... You this game, what was it, like four or five years ago? This is like, I, I think it, it was 2013, so this is okay. our like fourth or 53 showing the game. That's mildly ridiculous, but also, hey, that's but game you, But you took a break for a couple years. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We, I mean, we've shipped a bunch of games yeah. while we were making this game, and uh, I mean, we came on here, talked to you about Time Force, talked to you yeah. about last year about last OK year, KO. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we took some time and just decided to go dark and just focus on on actually finishing the game. And it's coming out this year, so we thought it's it was beautiful. time to resurface. I, I, let's take a look at something here. I got to play this uh, GDC, um, and you know the the fidelity. Um, you know, you guys have always been known, you know, for incredible sort of visuals and visual feel. Um, this is something that I think you know Below really uh, specializes in. Um, so tell us a bit about what we're seeing here, gameplay-wise. Um, from I think this is similar to what I had played maybe back at GDC. But yeah, the game, the game starts, uh, and you're this kind of unknown wanderer arriving to an island on a boat, and uh, you are a, a single character. You're not a character that keeps coming back life after life. You play each life as an individual character coming after the the last life. We don't tell you why you're there. We don't tell you what you're doing. We don't tell you how to do it. We just uh, let you learn and let you explore. And that's really what Below is about. It's about this kind of belief that uh, there's a sense of joy in discovering things for yourself and not having your hands held and in, in, yeah. in working your way through a tough game. Um, and it's so beautiful, but it's definitely, it's gonna be a challenge, right? Oh, it's a really tough game. I mean, death is permanent, but everything you achieve with each character, with you each Say that again, life, death is permanent, right? Permanent, yep. yeah. So, uh, right now, the, the Wanderer is finding the lantern, and the lantern is, is the key to the entire game. It's really the only like purely magical piece of, of, of equipment that you have. Right. I mean, it kind of, you know, it, the game is about light and dark, so it does light your way, but it'll also show you things that you couldn't see without it. But there's only one of them. Uh, and so it's kind of like a baton that needs to be passed from Wanderer to Wanderer. Um, and as you unlock doors, as you find your way through the game entirely by yourself without any tutorials or any dialogue, yeah. uh, the, the, the lantern is your key the entire way. Um, mm -hmm. And you're really there to, you're, you're there to discover what the game is actually even about. You have a sword, you have a shield, you have a lantern, and the rest is for you to, to go and find. And it's a vast open space, even the if you guys can see the fidelity on the stream, but even the blades of brass. The, yeah, especially the if you're playing. So, so one of the joys of having a long delayed game is that new hardware comes yeah. along. And so we worked with the folks at Microsoft and, and did a 4K 60 FPS version of Below for Xbox One X. Wow. That then also translates to all the PC players out there that are going to yeah. pick it up on Steam. Um, and so, you know, if you, it, it's, it's not going to make the game better. But if you are one of the people that have an Xbox One X or a badass PC rig and you have a 4K monitor, those blades of grass, your tiny character, all of the yeah. details are going to stand out a little more. And because the game is procedurally generated, so all of the single screen dungeons are new every time you arrive, yeah. seeing them in 4K is, it's nice, especially when a, a level is your screen. Yeah, no, that's why you said like, it's one of those games that you really have to like, Play on your own machine because even on like a stream, it's like it looks great. But yeah, the the, the detail that you guys have. absolutely. I mean, we spent so long trying to figure it, and we get the we get the question quite often about like, oh, the character's really small, or yeah. like, oh, it's a game for ants, yeah. uh, which is a pretty funny joke. Whoever coined that term, uh, <laughs> thanks. That stuck with us for like five years. But yeah, um, when you're playing in the dark with you know a, a really nice speaker system, really nice sound system, with yeah. a really nice television, or when you're playing even on your laptop, uh, it. The, the fidelity and kind of the scale is a big part of the aesthetic. And for us, aesthetic is super important. It's about the feel, it's about the atmosphere. This is not just a, a hack and slashy dungeon crawler, which it does. You have a sword, you have a shield. No, but it's acceptably beautiful because then there is that depth to the crafting and the weapons. Yep. Like, yep. There it's, is it's a lot a, there. It's also about the moments between battle. It's a, the moments of discovery, the moments of like just enjoying the, the fact that you've found a new open space. Um, and yeah, I mean, you can, you also, while you're enjoying this, you have to think about survival. You have to think about eating, drinking, staying warm. You have to go to fire pits and craft soups and um, everything that you craft, everything that you find, everything, every weapon that you take can be brought with you to this area we call the pocket, which is this kind of like space outside of the world, this space outside of space uh, that is permanent, that you can put weapons on a rack, that you can put shelves or uh, soups on a shelf. 
and leave them for future wanderers, for future lives. So you can incrementally build up this almost war chest of survival tools, of weaponry yeah. that you can pick and choose when to use. If you think you're going to go make a run to try to get down to the bottom of the depths, you need to grab your best weapon, you need to grab your strongest suits, you need to uh, grab your you know, best tools and hope you make it. Because if you don't, yeah. then you got to go in. Again. you got to go in for and you got to do yeah. it once more. Yeah. Well, you can always go and find your corpse. Yeah, take all the stuff that you had okay. and, and bring yeah. it with you. But yeah. um, finding your corpse is never uh, an easy path when the game is procedurally generated yeah. because you can't just memorize anything. Wow. Yeah, but there are certain parts of the game that are permanent. Yeah. Uh, this, the kind of like handcrafted, designed areas in the world, which are kind of sprinkled all throughout the game. Those are always going to be where they are. They're never yeah. going to shift around. They're not going to change floors. But the path to get to them is always going to be slightly different, and that's for every new wanderer to find. It's for every, uh, again, it's trying to like really double down on the idea that like discovery feels great when you're doing it yourself. Yeah, well, it looks incredible. And this year is the year, Nathan? Absolutely. Uh, I, will, I will die on that cross. You're, no, it's, you it's, I me mean, I, gotta, I admire the fact that you guys just said, hey, let's get quiet about it for a while. Let's continue working on it. Well, I mean, there's always two options with games, right? Yeah. There's uh, put them out when they have to come out or put yeah. them out when you're confident they're ready. Yeah. Uh, and we chose the latter. And I, yeah. I think we've, you know, we're in great company with a lot of other games that have been in development a long time. And I mean, we've, it's taken a lot of effort and a lot of commitment from yeah. the team back home. And I'm super proud of them because uh, it's, it's really tough to work on a game for a long time, especially when the only thing driving you is the belief that it's going to be better. That it's, How big is the team on this? Uh, uh, like 12 people. 12 people, that's yeah. amazing. Up in Toronto, Canada, yep. working hard, my yep. hometown. Yeah, born and raised, eh? Yeah, it's a beautiful space. Yeah, uh, no, I'm, you, making yeah. games in Toronto is one of my favorite things in the world. There, there's an amazing kind of culture around the city, and uh, we just saw Cuphead announce their DLC. DLC. Some of the Cuphead right folks are not too far away from us. I know, we're going to be with uh, them on Thursday, the E3 Coliseum. I thing can't doing a wait. Cool live that. animation workshop. Yeah. Maya is cool. super rad. I'm exactly. super happy for that game success. Yeah, so it's Hannah, success James, for... Maya are going to do like a whole demo of how they animated that game by hand, and they're going to be doing a demonstration. It's, it's, un it's unreal. There's a lot of great games coming out from Toronto, and we're yeah. going to see a whole bunch of them at E3. So super All right, exciting. we'll see you below later this year. Nathan, great Absolutely. to see you. Thank Thanks you so much. I appreciate it, my friend. Absolutely. Below, coming later this year. Now,